Hi, it's Lipstick Elle. Thanks for watching today. I wanted to show you some February favorites and fails. Before we get started, if you have not already subscribed, would you please? And I always feel kind of like, quit asking. Like, uh, it's hard for me, but the truth is I can't just will you to subscribe, like with my mind. I have to literally say, would you please? So I'm just gonna say it again. Thank you, if you are subscribed, thank you for watching. Thank you for being subscribed if you're not. Please consider. All right, favorites. This primer surprised me. This is the No Pore Blend Primer from Touch and Soul. It came in my BoxyCharm. And as you can see, I mean, I've been using it a lot. <laughs> I like this. It really walks the line between blurring pores and still staying hydrating. And I noticed that it did a good job of blurring my pores right in here where I really needed it to. But then as I use it on other parts of my face, like right around um, some of the fine lines I have around my eyes and my crow's feet, like right in here, and some smaller fine lines on my forehead. It filled them in very nicely and it helped my foundation to go on beautifully. Uh, the foundation that I've been reaching for the most is this one and I put it in my project pan because I wanted to finish it up but now I've really fallen in love with it and I think that the way that I fall in love with products is that consistent use and putting something in my project pan makes me kind of like you're using it, you're using it and then I got past that point of you're using it into I really like this. I feel like it's a really beautiful product and for me where we are right now in the dead of winter I live in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State and it's drier than dry and it's colder than cold and this still makes my skin look really pretty and a little bit glowy without being too much. I don't know if I'll be able to wear it in summer so hopefully we get through it before then. All right this is not the concealer what if i'm wearing this much makeup i'm using a different concealer one of the ones from my project pan but on the days that i don't want to wear a foundation and i just want a little bit of help in my problem areas under my eyes my hyperpigmentation spot here redness around the nose and the chin i've been using this it's from um, revolution makeup revolution and it's their fast base concealer i have the shade c2 so what i like about this it comes up through a little sponge applicator here is put it down when you put it on and you start to blend it in like it doesn't take very much and I feel like it gives me a little bit of coverage but you can't really see where it ends so I don't feel like I have to blend it in with foundation or put anything over the top I can just throw a little of this on where I need it and then I don't look like a zombie I look like a human <laughs> and it gives it just kind of brings a little bit more of that perfecting look and sometimes I'll leave the house wearing just this in lip gloss if I'm not if I'm really going for a very effortless look this really helps to erase a lot of my um, dark circles here and it's, it's buildable I don't use it in a really heavy way just enough to kind of like lightly distract from the fact that I have what looks like a black eye but I like this concealer a lot but I only use it on the days that I'm not wearing a full face uh, I did remember that I like this pressed powder. This is from ColourPop. It's the sheer, uh, their no filter sheer pressed powder. This is really beautiful. I have been using it enough that I've hit pan on it and the pan continues to get bigger and that makes me happy because I'm working on a project pan, even though this is not in there, but the fact that I finished any product makes me go, oh, good job, keep going. Um, other powders that I have been using a lot this month, there's the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Powder. I use this for buffing. Um, or to set my whole face and then this is still like holy grail status it's the hourglass veil translucent setting powder it's beautiful this has more of a yellow tone to it this one more of a pink tone to it if you're looking for something with a and it's it's they're both translucent but they do both have just a hint of color and they both work really well um shade wise under my eyes but if i'm really wanting something that's going to stay and keep my concealer in place I tend to like the hourglass a hair more all right my favorite powder bronzer this month has been the hula light I I can't believe that this has been sitting in my drawer and I forgot about it and I'm able to just put something in here and just kind of and I don't ever feel like it gets to be too much and maybe it is maybe I'm at that point now where I've crossed the line and it's too much but I feel like it's very forgiving and it blends beautifully I love, love, love this powder. I don't know that I'd be able to use Hoola the same way. Hoola Light is my perfect shade. Now, if we're talking about utter perfection, 
This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Contour Wand. It's almost like I feel like I'm living in the world of Harry Potter, that I am a student at Hogwarts and this is my magic wand. It is a sponge tipped contour. I usually just draw a little line on you know my face and then tap it in with my fingers or a beauty blender and just kind of and it goes from being like a really almost too dark stripe, like <laughs> I'm gonna be able to blend that into like gone. And not gone like as in disappeared, but like melted into the skin in like three or four little pounces, like and I'm like, wow, that looks really good. It's beautiful. Love that. Okay, so I would say my favorite blush this month. There's two out of here, but I'd say out of the two, this is one the one that I love the most. It's from Pretty Vulgar, and this one here is called Hush Blush. It it looks a little kind of peachy here, the way the light is hitting it, but in person it has more of a dusky rose look to it, a little bit more of that earthy tones, not quite as peachy, and it's just gorgeous, and it lasts beautifully all day. I also have fallen in love with this. This is also from Pretty Vulgar. This is their Shimmering Swan Glow Up Highlighter. This came in my BoxyCharm. This was really a tremendous highlight. It is so beautiful. It works really well. I was worried it was gonna to be too dark. It's not. And the other highlight I have been using a lot is from ColourPop. This is one of their Super Shock highlights. This is in the shade Lunch Money. So Lunch Money and the Shimmering Swan. This one I feel, when you put it on the skin, it's definitely more reflective than this one, the, the Lunch Money is, but when you sheer it out, just gonna rub it in for you here, it just looks glowy and beautiful. This one is pretty too, but it looks more, let me get a little bit more, it looks a little more highlighter-y I feel like it looks a little bit more like a highlighter and this just looks like glowing skin. I can't say how much I love this. I used to think Flexitarian was my favorite out of the Super Shock highlighters. I might have changed my mind. It might be lunch money. It's gorgeous. All right, so for eyes this month, I haven't really been using any eyeshadow palettes because, well, I've been using eyeshadow palettes, but I haven't fallen in love with one because I've been working on my eyeshadow chopping block making decisions so I had a huge stack I had like 30 shadows palettes and I wanted to use them all at least one last time but the reason they got into that chopping block like list was because either the colors were intimidating or uninspiring <laughs> or difficult to use or you see what I'm saying and so every day I was trying to go through and use them I was like oh I just can't and it kind of made my heart go ah. And that whole idea of Marie uh, Kondo, does it spark joy? They were not sparking joy, so many of them weren't. So what did do it for me this month? Super easy. I was taking whatever bronzer I was using and throwing that in the crease, and then a glitter shadow over top. These are both from Super uh, Super Shocks from ColourPop. <laughs> I can talk. Um, but these are like my two go-tos right now. This one is called Ladybird. It's crazy reflective. It is an ultra glitter shadow. This is also an ultra glitter, but this one here is called Birthday Wish. So this is in their limited edition packaging from last year. They do re-release their birthday shades every May during their birthday month. So if you didn't get this one last year, but it looks like a shadow you would like, you definitely can pick it up come May because they, for the last three years they have re-released previous birthday shades. I have all the birthday shades, birthday cake, birthday girl, birthday boy, birthday wish, and they were all favorites of mine. So I love doing that. Um, brows, it's basically been this, and it's so good. It's the $2 brow pencil from e.l.f. I never thought it was gonna be great because it was two bucks. Do not underestimate this. It is a little thicker than your average brow pencil, but it blends beautifully and it's not so sticky that when you're brushing it through, it has a really nice spoolie on it. Like for two bucks, I don't know how they make, they make money on this because they must sell a ton of them. This is a great product. I love this product. All right, still using the same mascara. It's a favorite for me. Let's talk some lips. This month, I've been using a lot of gloss and it's always 
one of the ColourPop. I have other ones around here somewhere from ColourPop. One's in, a couple of them are in my purse. Other ones are on the bathroom counter. But I really do love the Ultra Glossy Lip. I think they make a really, really beautiful formula. And I especially love that they finally changed when they re-released this. I think they changed the formula and then they put them in with little teeny tiny brush applicators. So much better, I think, than the doe foot. I think it's a really smart way and easy to apply. I love these. The shade I'm wearing today is this. It's from NARS. It is a satin lip pencil in the shade Luxembourg. I really love this shade. I forgot how good it was. And it's that nice, not quite a red, um, not really too pinky pink. It's not a bubblegum Barbie pink. It's more of that more of a hot pink, uh, maybe more like a raspberry red. It's a really beautiful shade. And the other one that I have been using a lot of is this Flower Beauty Matte and Mix and Matte. So you have a matte lipstick on one side and a gloss on the other. And this shade is Honey Nude. It's so beautiful. I tend to like the lipstick more than the gloss, but I use them both quite a lot trying to let you see it here. So this is the gloss. It's not as glossy as I would expect a gloss to be, but the lipstick is beautiful. And this Honey Nude shade is perfection. And what I love is I remember reading somewhere that they try every lip shade they make on a wide range of skin tones from really fair to really deep. And that to me is so smart and they don't put anything out that doesn't look good on everybody. So I feel like with the exception of maybe the undertone not being something that would work on me, I feel like most of the lip products that I have from them I really like because the shades all really work for me. And I can see them working for others as well. The last thing that I have really been reaching for a lot is from Marc Jacobs. This is their Enamored Lip Gloss Stick. And this is in the shade Sugar Sugar. Do you see how glossy that is? And that's when I think gloss, I want it to be glossy like this. The Flower Beauty is not nearly as glossy, but this works beautifully over lipstick. It works beautifully on its own. And I forgot how great this formula is. I have another one that I'm almost out of in Black Cherry, but I really love this sugar, sugar. All right, let's talk about what didn't work for me. This. <laughs> this is the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear, and they're calling it right down here at the bottom, more than concealer. It is more than concealer. For me, it ages me. Um, when I buy a concealer, I want to be able to use it to hide my dark circles, to take care of hyperpigmentation spots and redness that I have on my face. So I have a lot of extra redness that foundation kind of dulls a little bit, but a lot in the corners of my nose, across the top of my nose and on my chin. And that's where when I put on foundation, those places are still kind of like, we need more coverage. And that's where I love to use a concealer. This concealer here, I feel like when it dries, it dries a little bit darker. I have the shade 330 Ivory. I feel like when it dries, it dries darker than it went on. Uh, that's just my impression of it. It also is very drying under my eyes. It really accentuates my wrinkles and crinkles. And it's not one that I can leave without setting it, so it needs a setting powder. And then that only adds to the dryness under my eyes. And I feel like a person who's just kind of like, come back to life like I'm clawing to get out of the grave because my skin looks so dry and so desperately unhealthy. And I know it's the middle of winter. I might try this again. I just don't know that it's going to be for me under the eyes. I think that if you had oily skin, and I don't necessarily have dry skin. This time in the winter, I can get some dry areas, but normally I have normal to combination and more oils around my nose. I get a lot of makeup that breaks up in that area. But I don't know, maybe I'll just use this on my nose. Maybe that's where it's going to be great. But I do find that it's a little dark, it's a little drying, and it, it doesn't do me any favors. All right, I tried three mascaras that I know are not gonna work for me. One is this one, it's from CoverGirl. It's the Super Sizer Big Curl. I love the original Super Sizer. That is like that and the Clump Crusher. Those are my two favorite mascaras. I like the L'Oreal Paradise Mascara. That's great, but it dries really fast and it's really expensive. And the 
CoverGirl ones are less expensive and the Clump Crusher and the regular Supersizer I like. This one here, the wand is enormous. The wand and the brush together, it's just like, it's so big. And I know the original Supersizer has these little teeny tiny baby bristles on there. And this does too, the formula is okay, but I don't like the formula and the brush together. I don't think they make my lashes look as good as the other wand with the other mascara from CoverGirl. The Supersizer is so much better. All right, this came in my BoxyCharm. It's a Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. It does have a really nice brush on it. it. The formula is nice when you initially put it on. You get gorgeous lashes. But the problem I have is that I get smudging. And I don't take smudging from any mascara, much less one that costs $24. I just, so I will never purchase that again. It was nice to try it. I took it on, um, I had an extended weekend getaway for um, veter not Veterans Day, for President's Day. And that was the only mascara I took. And I could have kicked myself because by the end of the day, I had smudging right under here. There's there, there, no amount of doing this or putting concealer. There was, there was no way it was there. And it was just either wash your face or deal with it. <laughs> And it was so sad. Oh, so I don't like when a makeup product betrays me and I felt like the better than sex really did. It might be your favorite, it might work for you, but it just does not go with the rest of what I normally put on my face. This is another product here that I've had open for about a month and I used it again. It's from YSL. It's a sample of their The Shock Mascara. So I like the way it looks on my lashes. I like that it comes with a little bit of a slight hourglass brush to it. The problem I have with it, and I don't know if this is maybe because it's the sample size, is that it always comes out with so much product on it. And maybe that's why they call it the shock. It's like shocking how much product there is on this wand. If I were to go straight to my lashes, my lashes would clump together. One here, one here, one here. <laughs> and it would just be like, no. So. I end up doing this. I don't know if you ever do this. Like, I don't want to waste the product. I don't want to wipe it off onto a tissue. I scrape as much of it as I can off, like right onto here. And then I try that, but it still has a little bit too much. So I roll it on the back of my hand and I get any of the excess off, especially on the, the tip of the wand. And then I feel like I can go in and do it. But that's a lot of effort for a mascara when other ones aren't as difficult to use. So the formula is great. It lasts well. It doesn't flake. It doesn't smudge. And it does give a really voluminous and like, these are my lashes look, except for, I don't know. If you have this, does the full size have a better stopper? So when you pull it out, it's not completely covered where you can't even see the bristles. It's all just like a big giant black goo of mascara. I'd like to know because I like it and I think it could be a favorite if I didn't constantly have to wipe it all off on the back of my hand. All right, those are my favorites and fails. Thank you so much for watching. I, I know it's been a little long, so if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much. Let me know what your favorites were for this month or if you have a type of video you'd like to see me do, I'd love to hear that. I'll see you again soon and have a great day. Bye.